This is part 1 of my healing guide for Terra players. I will go over some general tips, look at some differences between both healer classes and talk about the gear and card setups. I will also talk about some common mistakes I see new healers make. Parts 2a and 2b will be about the priest and mystic classes specifically. Those videos will come soon. Anyway, let's get started. Healers don't have a fixed rotation. Instead, they do whatever is necessary to keep the party going while following their priorities. The top priority of a healer is to stay alive and do the boss mechanics if there are any important ones. The second highest priority is to keep other players alive, especially the tank. Resurrecting dead players is usually less important than keeping people alive. When somebody gets stunned, then cleansing right away is often critical in order to keep them alive, as stuns are often followed by powerful boss mechanics. A stunned player cannot dodge, so it is important to cleanse stuns first and then heal. On the other hand, if people have a debuff that only slows them down a bit or drains HP but slowly, then healing first is often a good choice. Don't forget to also recharge mana though. A healer also has to buff the party and debuff the boss. This can often be done in between or even at the same time as other things. For example on Priest, Divine Charge can simultaneously increase your movement speed, let you walk through the boss and heal the party while holding the skill button down. And once you release it, it gives a buff to the party. There can be some exceptions to the priorities though. For example, if the tank is dead, and you know that that DPS who is about to die will die even if you heal them, then resurrecting the tank instead might be the smarter option. Adapting to the situation is very important, especially if the run gets rough. In Terra, the values of different roles are not equal. A dead DPS is unlikely to cause a wipe, unless the dungeon mechanics require the full party to be alive, or if there is a shield phase for example. A dead tank is a lot more likely to cause serious trouble. A healer that cannot get up because the resurrection scrolls and skills are on cooldown means the party will most likely wipe. So do not try to resurrect another player if your health is so low that regular hit by the boss could kill you instantly. The healer can resurrect other players an unlimited amount of times since the cooldown time of the resurrection skill is short. On the other hand, if the healer dies and cannot resurrect on their own, then a DPS or tank has to use a resurrection scroll, which has a cooldown time of 20 minutes. So the healer is limited to however many times they can resurrect themselves, plus 4 more every 20 minutes at best. By the way, when you're playing any class besides healer, make sure you always carry some scrolls of rapid resurrection and have them bound to a key. You can buy them at the specialty store. If you're the healer, you died and you cannot get up on your own, then ask party members for a res right away. If the healer is dead on the floor and does not res right away, then as DPS I will have to figure out if I should use a precious res scroll or not. The healer might just be waiting for a good opportunity to get up without dying, or they might even have disconnected, so if I use my scroll it will be wasted and on cooldown for 20 minutes. If however I know that the healer will call for resurrection right away, then I won't waste the scroll if the healer doesn't call and I will be able to resurrect the healer quicker when they actually need a rest. Always remember that you cannot heal suicide. Sometimes DPS and tank players do things that make it impossible to save them. If they keep dying because of that, then you can give even more priority to other players who contribute more. At some point it will happen that people blame you for their deaths, when actually they didn't bother learning the mechanics or they just ignore them. In that case, don't worry and just ignore what the player is saying. If it was very clear that the healer wasn't at fault, then other party members might even defend you. Healers have to survive, so they need to know the dungeon mechanics in their sleep. If you're a relatively new player, 
then I recommend that you learn new dungeons on DPS first and try to heal once you know the mechanics well and you are able to survive. For harder dungeons, it is also very important to know your class well, especially on healer. You might want to heal easy dungeons until you're comfortable on your healer and then progress to harder dungeons. In my opinion, Sorcerer is a good DPS class for learning to survive on healer. The backstab dodge is the same as the one on Priest, and the teleport jaunt is the same skill as the mystic dodge. Sorcerers also wear cloth armor, and they say at a similar range than healers. Teleport jaunt has a relatively short iframe time, so some mechanics are harder to dodge on mystic than on priest. If you learn a dungeon on sorcerer first, then you can practice iframing mechanics using teleport jaunt and if you die, it is less of a problem than on Mystic. Of course, dual heals are also a good option for learning. In that case, you should try to have one Priest and one Mystic though, so the DPS and Tank get both the Priest and Mystic buffs. The playstyles for Mystics and Priests are actually quite different. As I already mentioned, there are differences when it comes to iframes, but that's not the only thing. Mystics rely more on their lock-on healing, and their cleanse is also a lock-on skill. This means that the party can be more spread out, and you can still cleanse everybody at once. However, it can be slower than cleansing on Priest, because you first have to lock on to everybody. Due to this, it might be easier to play Priest if your ping is quite high. The healing spells are stronger on Priest, but Mystic feels a bit faster. Mystics can do decent damage while healing at the same time, assuming the party knows the dungeon well and doesn't face tank everything. Both classes are fun to play and both are viable choices for hard dungeons, as long as you have the skill level. So if you like healing, then you should try both classes and choose the one you like most. Healers are magic classes and they use cloth armor, so you should buy a set of dark light gear once you reach level 69. Avoid eternal dark light gear, even if you can find it for cheap or even for free. The eternal versions are not worth it anymore. This also counts for the Kaya's Sanity and Kaya's Ferocity sets, which is what you get when you convert eternal gear to Kaya. The good sets are called Kaya's Wisdom and Kaya's Fury. If you want to know more about these sets and how to get them, then you should check out my video on the topic. Each piece of gear can have up to three optional stats. For healers, magic resistance is the best stat you can get. It reduces damage taken from special and key mechanics, but it also increases the strength of your buffs. Magic amplification, crit factor and magic crit power are also decent for healers. The gear pieces with perfect stats are still very expensive. But in my opinion, you don't really need to go for perfect stats anyway. Assuming you have the player skill to run a certain high level dungeon, then missing optional stats will not prevent you from doing well. I usually just look for something that is close to the cheapest price, but has some decent stats. Options such as HP for example, are still better than no optional stats at all. Physical resistance is useful, but HP and magic resistance are better choices. Just make sure you avoid physical amplification and other physical attack stats. Power does not increase healing, but it does increase DPS, which can be nice on Mystic. There are also some scrolls that let you change options or even increase the number of options. For the card setup, instead of reading all those names, I decided to make a table. Feel free to pause the video to take a screenshot if necessary. All of these cards work for healers, but cards that increase magic resistance and reduce aggro are the preferred choice. Magic amplification will increase healing and damage, so it is always a good option as well. Magic crit power has the same effect, but magic amplification is preferred because the effect is stronger as far as I am aware. HP recovery does not help with healing other players, however according to the Priest and Mystic Discord server, it increases heals you receive from other healers, from Thrall of Life, Warding Totem, Heal Thyself and Immersion Self Heal. Crit Factor is only useful if you haven't reached Crit Cap yet. 
I will talk about crit cap in both parts 2a and 2b of this guide. Combat movement speed and increased HP are also useful, so you can use those to fill up available slots and points. When choosing cards, keep in mind that monster cards only apply to monsters of the type the card mentions, so for healing those are not worth it. For the sad effects there are two options that give the same desirable buff. They are called War and Peace and Hard and Stronger. After landing a critical hit, they have a 30% chance to increase magical and physical resistances by 1500 each for 30 seconds, but with a 3 minute cooldown. The sad effect called Fallow Goblins can be useful when learning new dungeons. One of the most common mistakes I see new healers make is that they are so stressed about keeping others alive or resurrecting them that they completely forget to heal themselves and then they die trying to save somebody else. As I explained earlier, the life of the healer is a lot more valuable than the lives of other party members. So heal yourself first and make sure you don't die before worrying about anything else. In case you have to choose between you dying or somebody else dying, then it is usually better to let the other player die. For example, imagine you died and need to get up again, but the boss is casting this attack that might kill you right away. A DPS player is about to die and could use immediate heals, but do not get up until the boss has finished his attack. It is better to let the DPS die and resurrect them later, than getting up and potentially wasting a res. Sometimes you will encounter DPS players who get angry if you don't pocket heal them. Or they are dead on the floor for a few seconds and start complaining already, because you're too busy healing. Of course, as healer you need to be able to cast skills very quickly, but there is a limit to what you can do. Leave the angry DPS on the floor until you have time to rest them, without risking too much. The healer should ask for a rest right away if needed, but DPS and tank players should not. It will just make the healer nervous and mess things up even more. The only time DPS and tank players should ask for a rest is if the healer tried to rest them already, but it missed. Sometimes I see healers who are just way too slow. They use a skill and then run around for a second or two without doing anything. Or they just take forever to aim or to lock on to everybody. Basically in Terra, if you're running around not casting skills, then you're just wasting time. That's not only true for healers, but for any class. If you're too slow, then you might want to play DPS for a while and learn how to cast skills quickly. New healers often don't know that they need to buff the party and debuff the boss. Make sure you don't do that mistake. Buffs and debuffs will make a significant difference to the amount of damage your teammates can put out. I will talk a bit more about buffs and debuffs in part 2a and 2b of this healing guide. Using the wrong gear setup is a very common mistake on any class. Make sure you're using dark light gear instead of annihilation. They use the same icons, so mistakes can happen easily. Rings, earrings and necklaces also come in two versions. One with a fixed crit factor stat and one with a fixed power stat. Make sure to use the crit factor version if you haven't reached crit cap yet. Well, that concludes part one of my healing guide. I talked to some people from my guild and I also looked at the healer discord server in order to verify the information I gave in this video. The links to the healer discord server as well as the Terra Master Race discord are in the description below. I included the Terra Master Race discord as well because I found the link to the healer discord here. It's a nice place to find all kinds of information about Terra, so you might want to check it out. Let me know in the comments below. Which healer class do you prefer and why? If you have any other comments or if you have any questions, you may drop those below as well. Leave a like if this video was helpful and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.